Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure and a privilege to give this talk today. My task is to answer the, to the question, IBD-related gastrointestinal cancer, are they different? My disclosures. Several gastrointestinal cancers are associated with IBD. They are cancers of the biliary tree, uh, cancers of the anus, and cancers of the intestine. We will uh, focus on colon cancer, which uh, are associated with both Crohn colitis and ulcerative colitis and are adenocarcinoma. And also we'll say a few words about small bowel cancer, uh, which are associated with small bowel Crohn disease and are also adenocarcinoma. Let's go, into the, uh, to, let's go to the point. And um, as a matter of fact, there are some features that uh, differentiate IBD-related colorectal cancer versus sporadic cancer. First of all, uh, IBD-related colorectal cancer occur in younger patients. Uh, their location is similar in UC and sporadic cancer, but it is more proximal in Crohn's disease and in patients who have associate primary sclerosing cholangitis. It is more, more often synchronous and more often mucinous or signaturing uh, cells in IBD than in sporadic. Uh, similar uh, conclusions can be drawn about the small bowel cancer associated or not with Crohn's disease. Here you can see that the median age is lower in small bowel cancer associated with Crohn's disease. It's more often synchronous and most importantly, Small bone cancer associated with Crohn's disease is in general located within the inflamed epithelium uh, in the ileum, whereas it is more evenly distributed along the small bowel in patients with small bowel cancer without Crohn's disease. IBD-related colorectal cancer and sporadic uh, colorectal cancers have not the same natural history. On the top of this slide, you can see the, something that you are very familiar with, the uh, um, summary of the natural history of sporadic colon cancer. It starts with early adenoma, and then goes to intermediate adenoma, to late adenoma, and then to carcinoma. Uh, the, the natural history is somehow different in colitis-associated colon cancer. It starts with inflammation, then goes to indefinite dysplasia, low-grade dysplasia, high-grade dysplasia, and carcinoma. This is also the same natural history in small bowel cancer. As you can see here, there is a small bowel cancer in a patient with Crohn's disease, and the, in the vicinity, you can see dysplasia. As a matter of fact, in a, in a small series that was uh, recently published, we found dysplasia in half of the surgical specimens of small bowel cancer associated with Crohn's disease. It was either adjacent or distant, to the cancer, it may be flat or raised, and all dysplastic lesions were found in the in inflamed mucosal areas, meaning that it's very similar to what you can find in colorectal cancer associated with colitis. There are differences between, uh, there are molecular differences between sporadic colon cancer and colitis associated colon cancer. The loss of APC function is an early event in sporadic colon cancer, whereas it is a late event when it occurs in colitis-associated colon cancer. The reverse is true for P53 mutations, which occur at a late stage in sporadic colon cancer, whereas it is an early event in colitis-associated colon cancer. Something which is unique to uh, the uh, IBD-related colorectal cancer is the concept of field cancerization. Um, you can find some genetic and epigenetic alterations in normal, meaning non-neoplastic, but generally inflamed intestinal mucosa in IBD, distant, sometimes very far, from the area of dysplasia. You, you have the, here a, a list of several genetic and epigenetic alterations in uh, normal uh, mucosa in IBD. Um, this defines the phenomenon of field cancerization, uh, which means that the mucosa 
large areas of histologically normal epithelium are preconditioned to the future development of neoplasia. Here you have an illustration in a single patient who uh, had ulcerative colitis, who had Crohn's disease, sorry, and went into a surveillance program with repeated colonoscopies, 1996, 1998, and uh, every one to two years subsequently. You can see here the appearance of two mutations of P53 in um, non-neoplastic areas. Uh, color, uh, sigmoid cancer rising from uh, a clone with the yellow mutation. When the patients underwent a sigmoid resection, the margins still had the P53, the blue P53 mutation, and then the clone expanded proximally. Then a third P53 mutation appeared in a non-displastic non uh, mucosal area, and it extended proximally, but also distally, and a rectal cancer appeared, arising from this founder mutation. It was possible to do a phylogenic tree, showing here the founder mu mutation within the rectal cancer, and the subclones with 9, 9P LOH and 17P LOH, and sub-subclone, Arise, arising from these two subclones. Uh, what is the theory of the field cancerization in the inflamed gut? It starts with a basic idea that the stem cells that you can see here, located within the depth of the crypt, when they are mutated, they have a survival advantage. When there is an uh, inflammation, the mutated stem cells have a survival advantage over the non-mutated stem cells. And when the inflammation resolves, there, uh, there is a more rapid repopulation with the mutated stem cells than with the non-mutated stem cells. Uh, this probably explains, at least in part, why there is this uh, phenomenon of clonal expansion and uh, field cancerization, which, is, which seems to be unique to this uh, colorectal uh, cancer uh, pathway. It's not, on, it's not only a matter of molecules and genes, but also the risk factors of colorectal cancers associated with IBD are very different from those uh, observed with sporadic colorectal cancer. The duration of ulcerative colitis, particularly when, in, when it, uh, it is more than eight years, the extent of colonic inflammation, the more extensive, the more increased risk, the association with primary sclerosis and cholangitis which increases very much the risk of colorectal cancer in IBD. Chronic active inflammation, either demonstrated by endoscopy or histology. Pseudopolyps, strictures, shortened colon, and family history all increase the risk of colorectal cancer in patients with, uh, with IBD. But these factors are very different from those uh, observed in sporadic colorectal cancer. The diagnosis is more difficult. Uh, every patient with ulcerative colitis should be entered in a surveillance colonoscopy program that starts six to eight years after the first symptoms and then is performed one to four years according to uh, the risk factors. Uh, patients who have primary sclerosing cholangitis should have a first colonoscopy at diagnosis and further colonoscopies every year because of the increased risk of uh, neoplasia observed in these patients. Yet, the interval colorectal cancer is highest in IBD as compared to sporadic colorectal cancer, suggesting that the endoscopic diagnosis is more difficult in IBD than it is in uh, sporadic colorectal cancer. This is illustrated by the following slide. You can see here a colonoscopy. The preparation is very good. And here you have a dysplasic, uh, dyschromic uh, region, nothing special, with full inflation, not suspect at all. When you deflate the colon, then it's more sus suspect. And when you applied indigo carmine, you can see that there is a tumor that stands out with a greater contrast after indigo carmine uh, spray. So you can see on this example, 
look at here and look at here, how difficult and challenging the endoscopic diagnosis of uh, uh, IBD-related colorectal cancer can be. It's about the same and even more difficult with small bowel cancer. You can see here uh, that in most, in nearly all of the cases, there was no preoperative diagnosis of small bowel cancer in patients with Crohn's disease. And you will see here an example. Here is a resection specimen of a patient who had ileocecal resection and was uh, resected because of a stricture that did not respond to medical therapy of Crohn's disease. You can see here there's nothing particularly um, intriguing with, a, with this stricture. Uh, and the preoperative uh, imaging was negative. The surgeon performed an ileocecal resection, uh, which he considered was not suspect. But at the microscopic level, you can see here a signaturing cell carcinoma. This is, I have ten, tens of stories like this. This is the usual uh, mode of revelation of a small bowel cancer in, uh, in, um, in Crohn's disease. It's not suspected preoperatively, and in many times it's not suspected intraoperatively. Only the pathological examination of the resected specimen is able to do the diagnosis. Uh, some clues, intestinal obstruction not relieved by medical management, abrupt one set with severe symptoms after a period of quiescent Crohn's disease should raise the suspicion of small bowel adenocarcinoma associated with Crohn's disease. Is it the same prognosis? Uh, there are lots of studies about, uh, that try to answer to this question. I have selected one, perhaps the, the best one. It's a Danish nationwide, nationwide study performed between 1977 and 1999. Uh, 279 uh, colorectal cancers associated with UC as compared with roughly 70,000 sporadic colorectal cancer. Um, by the way, you can see here that it's a rare occurrence, colitis-related uh, uh, colorectal cancer, but it occurs in young patients at very high risk, so it's a, it's a challenge uh, for the gastroenterologist. Having said that, this study shows that the prognosis of colorectal cancer associated with ulcerative colitis is significantly poorer after one year of, of follow-up and either after five years of follow-up as compared to sporadic colorectal cancer. And this is even more pronounced in the younger patients, those who are less than 59, and in the most advanced stages. Is it the same treatment? It's not the same surgical treatment. When you have a sporadic colorectal cancer, you perform a segmental colectomy. When you have a, when you have a, a UC associated colorectal cancer, the, 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 the good operation is restorative proctocolectomy, meaning uh, resection of the whole colon and the rectum with sometimes the um, mesorectal excision and the construction of ileoanal pouch, a very difficult surgery, and possibility of fistula that may impact uh, the beginning of the post-operative chemotherapy if indicated. Speaking about chemotherapy, there, are, uh, there have been only a few studies about the tolerance in patients with colorectal cancer associated with ulcerative uh, colitis as compared to sporadic. Here is a retrospective study performed in the Mount Sinai uh, Hospital in New York. Uh, 80 patients with uh, colitis associated CRC were matched with uh, 78 patients with sporadic colorectal cancer. They received uh, approximately, uh, they received the same regimens. And what is very uh, remarkable is that there was many more treatment alterations in those patients who had IBD as compared to those who had sporadic colorectal cancer. The difference here is significant, roughly uh, three-fourths of, of the patient as compared to less than uh, one-half of the patients. And you can see here diarrhea, diarrhea, uh, diarrhea everywhere, meaning that uh, the um, decreased tolerance to chemotherapy uh, was in many times due to diarrhea. To answer the questions, 
Uh, are they different? Yes, they are different. They occur in younger patients. Younger patients, they have different risk factors. They have different pathogenesis. There is the field effect in IBD, which seems to be unique to this condition. The diagnosis is more difficult. The prognosis is worse. The surgery is more complex, and the chemotherapy is uh, less well tolerated. Having said that, prospective studies are needed to define the best regimen in order to maximize therapeutic benefit and minimize toxicity in patients with IBD-related intestinal cancer. I thank you for your attention.